This is Runes, a brand new physical computing gadget. There's a board and you snap on these little bits called the Runes. And it makes these setups that work kind of like slow motion electronic circuits. Watch them go. Sometimes they go straight, sometimes they bend a little or turn. But the real deal is these weird ones. They take two streams of marbles and combine them in various ways. These things work like logic gates. And if you can make logic gates, that means this thing is capable of modeling any algorithm your computer could do. It's a classic Turing complete universal machine. This is actually a first for my little YouTube channel. Someone sent me a brand new product to review. Does that make me an influencer now? Probably not. Runes was created by Jesse Locke in the UK, and Jesse actually never heard of me until I wrote to him. Somebody told me about Runes, and then I wrote to Jesse and asked for a review kit. Jesse was generous enough to send me one, and I didn't pay him, and he didn't pay me, or tell me to make this video, or tell me what to say. But I feel like if runes already existed, it's the kind of thing I would get and make a video about. It's similar in spirit to the old paper computers, which I will get back to at some point. It's like one guy who keeps asking for more of those. Sorry, guy. I am trying to help Jesse out a little here. Runes isn't in full production yet, but he's starting a Kickstarter campaign today, so check it out if you're interested. If you follow the YouTube A-listers like these guys, you may have seen these kinds of mechanical logic gate toy computers. These folks made one out of water flowing down through these weird tubes. This one is a thing you can buy already called Turing Tumble that works with marbles and gravity. You arrange the pieces how you want on the board, you load it up with marbles and let her rip. But runes doesn't really rip. You actually control it as it goes. See, there's this little gear box here and another driver box. And the gears stick out the sides a little and there's magnets on the sides so they can snap together. And I can turn the little crank here and all the gears turn. And those gears push upwards to make a little like reciprocating motion on these bars. And the bars support the computing area. This is a sort of alternating current that runs the whole thing. And then you get these individual tiles that you put on there. These are the runes. They all have a slope to them. And because of the slopes, when you line these guys up, the marble's going to move in that direction. All these little bits have magnets in them, so they snap into position in a grid. Like any good computer, the whole thing is totally modular. You can actually put the driver box anywhere you want, and the gears still work. And if you've got more boards, you can link them all up. Everything's magnetic, so they fit together just right. The fact that we're not using gravity means we can easily make far more sophisticated stuff than those other guys. I mean, most real computation involves loops, and those things, they don't loop. But it's no problem here, and not relying on gravity also lets you control the speed. You can start and stop whenever you want, go slower or faster. This is actually a lot like an electronic computer which operates on a specific clock speed. Like, you know, my laptop has a clock speed of 3 gigahertz. That means the data flows through the machine in a synchronized rhythm of about 3 billion pulses per second. And this thing has a synchronized rhythm too. It's like 1 per second. Anyway, for actual computing, electronic computers use logic gates like AND, OR, NOT, that kind of stuff. And Jesse designed special runes that give you that same functionality. So there's a whole new language of gates to learn. I'm not really an expert yet, but Jesse has a great website with interactive simulators so you can try out how all the different runes are supposed to work. This would actually be pretty cool by itself as a little puzzle game, even if there was no physical runes. There's plenty of great video games out there that are basically just this. The most basic rune is this one. That's called the path rune, and it just sends a marble ahead by one position. It works because of the slope on here together with the up and down motion. This is a very elegant design. And this here is the turn rune. It makes a marble do a full 180 and go back the other direction. There's also a long turn if you need to space things out more. This one you gotta kinda block it off so it doesn't fall down. Hey look at that, Jesse made me my very own custom runes. I feel seen. The turns have directions, so actually you get left hand turns and right hand turns. This one here is called the shimmy rune. Isn't that cute? It just kind of pushes the marble over to the side a little bit. You get right hand and left hand shimmies. All right, now here's our first fancy one. Jesse calls this the switch rune. This one's like a if then else kind of thing. If you put a marble through on the left, I'm going to use a red one for that. It just goes straight through, even if there's another one next to it. 
So the red one on the left always just goes straight through. I'll call that one the control. But look what happens on the right side. If the control is there, then the one on the right just goes straight through. But if there's no control, it comes out the middle. See the shape of this little thing? It's got some weird grooves in it or whatever. It comes out the middle, which is a bit awkward, but we can use this other guy, the distributor rune. And this setup really does work like a if-then-else kind of thing. If the red control is there, my gold guy takes the track on the right, and otherwise it takes the track on the left. Here's a weird one. Jesse calls this the canute. It's the same as the switch, but the control bit on the left just kicks back and stays there. You can use the canute to do lots of weird stuff, but the most basic setup works kind of like a valve that stays in one position permanently. Like here, the stream of marbles is all going to go down the left path because there's no control. But then at some point, the control comes along, and from now on, they all go down the right path. All right, there's three more runes, and these ones are my favorites. This here is the trap rune. If you run one marble into it on the left, it kind of gets stuck in there. And now other ones can still run past it on the left. But then if one comes along on the right, they both get knocked out. Very strange, but you can do lots of crazy stuff with this. All that logic comes just from this weird shape. Right on, Jesse. This one is called the XOR rune, because it does something like the classic exclusive OR gate. If you put one marble in on either side, it comes out the middle. And if you put two in, they just run straight through. If you put the distributor afterwards and sort of block off the two sides, the middle output is the XOR. One comes in, one comes out. But if two come in, none come out. That's an XOR right there. And the last one, this is my favorite, the swap rune. Check out this weird shape. A marble that comes in on the left gets bounced over to the right, and coming in on the right gets bounced over to the left. So it swaps the positions. I like it. Unfortunately, the XOR and the swap really show the limitations of Jesse's 3D printed prototypes. These things are really small, and the fine tolerances and the shapes are pretty touchy, so they often don't work right. Jesse tells me his main goal for the Kickstarter is to get these things made by injection molding, which should allow them to be much more reliable. Of course, that's not something I know much about, so to be honest, I can't vouch for the quality of his final product. I hope he's able to work out the kinks. So I'm going to try to make something interesting here. Like I said before, I haven't had a lot of time to play around with these. And to me, with super low-level programming like this, it takes some time to learn to think like the machine. This is going to be some kind of very basic, unary arithmetic machine. I'm going to start with two strings of marbles on the right and two horizontal rows. i got five on top and two on the bottom. And I'm going to run them down until they fall off into my little matchbox over here. Did you see what I just did? Are you impressed? I just did addition. I started with five and two, and I got seven in the answer, huh? All right, I guess that was kind of stupid, but how about this? Instead of adding them, I just want the answer to be whichever number is bigger, the maximum. I'm going to make it so the bigger number ends up on the left side in the matchbox, and the other ones just kind of get dumped out the bottom. I got five in the box, and that's not because five was on the top. Here, I'll do it again, but start with five on the bottom. The machine always chooses the bigger number and puts it in the box. Could we do the minimum instead? Yeah, actually, we only need to change this one thing right here. Huh? Now you get two. How you like that? And for my greatest trick, subtraction. No matter which number starts where, it's going to give me the bigger number minus the smaller number. Five minus two is three, son. These ones are real simple, but Jesse cooked up designs for far more sophisticated machines. Here's a machine for adding binary numbers with carries. That's fancy, and actually pretty simple too. Besides the paths, there's really only four runes in there. Can you do binary subtraction? Yeah, probably. It's kind of amazing, all this calculation. At the most basic level, it just comes from these little grooves and slopes on the pieces here. Makes you wonder, like, you don't need one of these to make a computer. If this can be a computer, or this, or this, I guess pretty much anything could make a computer. Mm -hmm.